Coming up this week on the Digital Lifestyle Show 847, Richard here, and we've got lots to talk about. Microsoft's hybrid work event uh, focusing a lot on Windows 11. We'll be talking about that and new features coming to Windows 11. Uh, we had no new builds last week, but we did get some uh, a rebranding of an app uh, that uh, is going to be quite important part of Windows. Uh, we've got um, space news as well that Richard will bring us and lots more. So let's get straight to Richard. Uh, Richard, good evening. Good evening, Ian. Yes, you're uh, enjoying fighting with your um, with your Bluetooth headphones and Teams. Yes, indeed. I've, I've, I've got new pet names for them. Uh, Beelzebub and Satan, that's what they call them from now on. <laughs> 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 which, you, yeah, which is which. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, well, we've got plenty to talk about this week. Um, we've got my, had Microsoft's hybrid event work event today with uh, Panos Panay, so we could talk about that. And there's some new features in Windows coming with that as well. Uh, we didn't get a bill, but we did get some updates. Your phone is now something else, and a bit Android, Microsoft news as well. So let's start with the. Um, the hybrid event that was today. Uh, so did you get a chance to see that? Uh, yes, El Panos today getting good and pumped on the stage. Although I, I don't know about you, but I didn't get much of what was actually there now. It all seemed to be, this is coming really soon. Yes, it was. Um, there was there was some stuff that I think if you're an enterprise type stuff, if, especially using endpoint management, that kind of thing. There was quite a lot of things that looked quite interesting on there. Some stuff for, for more I, our audience, that general Windows features, there, they were, the stuff is there coming, some of stuff coming and some stuff uh, we don't know when is coming. So one of the things that uh, they did show off was the new um, home page in File Explorer, which uh, it kind of quietly been testing for for some time now and I don't I actually will I can actually show you this because this is already available for Windows Insiders. Um, yes, although didn't uh, get yanked out of the of the inside of the inside side of build when they went from dev channel to, to a beta. It was still in. It, it, it yes, really yes, you, yes you did. You're right, but I think it's back in there now. Um let's uh I can't. I should be able to just hover over the window and share the screen, shouldn't I? Because I mean, yeah, uh, Satan together. Yes. Yes. Yeah, so there we go. Um, yeah. So this is just a virtual machine that I'm running on here. But yeah, the, the the quick access now shows recent files and favorites, and pin files. Sorry, to favorites, recent files, and they show you where they're from. Now on mine, it's showing it's OneDrive because everything's on OneDrive because I've only got one account linked on here. But if you have multiple accounts, or maybe you're working with um, another team then that would show up here so maybe you if you shared a onedrive file with me and i've been working on it it would show it's here as richard's onedrive uh that, that it's sourced from or if it was in sharepoint it shows it's in sharepoint so it, it's sort of showing you where the the files are as well as being ones on your local machine or on onedrive so it kind of makes a bit more sense with it um so that's one of the things that they showed off the the other thing that, that is coming that it didn't show off but is in the build is thumbnails on the pictures uh, the mm -hmm. folders and i don't so i don't know that uh when that's coming but what they did show off that was that was quite interesting was uh file explorer tabs and we've seen this before because people have managed to get it working through the vive tool um but this is the first time i think that they've publicly announced that uh that this this product you know this feature is coming to windows 11 but what they didn't say is when, unless you unless you picked up on something I I missed. Nothing at all. I mean, I was I I, I was listening throughout because of course you know we've we've seen all the, all these things appearing in the insider channel. So yeah, you know, the, uh, the 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 question has always been okay, that's great. When are we going to get the CDs in in, in Windows 11? I mean, are we going to have to wait until the big refresh that happens at the end of the year, or will it be in the in, in the coming months? Yeah, it's it's it seems odd that they would not. Tell us when these things are going to happen. I mean, not least because uh, certain Windows users need to know the information for, for planning purposes. Yeah, that's right. So, um, so they sh they showed this off. It, like I said, it isn't there in for insiders at the moment. Um, actually, you've got to think. Oh, maybe I share this window instead. I've got to grab the screenshot from the video. 
you can't really tell that much from it. But yeah, it's just the the plus side. I did yeah. give you a little uh, get a little screenshot in there of the Windows 10 sets, which you can see it's pretty much the same thing. Apart from that, you could have any application, and this it's just uh, File ex- yeah. File Explorer. Which, to be fair, makes a lot of sense because one of the problems they had with sets was they couldn't make it work everywhere. Yeah, you know, they, they had problems mm. with, with Office and things, so it does make it does make make make, make a lot of sense. And I think, to be honest, it's probably most useful in File Explorer. I mean, I'm looking forward to to it being in in, in production for sure. Yeah, it's, it, it is just a question of when. And I was part kind of hoping that we would maybe get um, a build announced um, a build announced tonight, and you know that we would we would have that just in time and here's the new features that we've been talking about in his file tab <laughs> file explorer but that's not the case because we didn't get a build last week and i wondered whether that's because this is all ready to go in, in the works but maybe it'll come this week so um there's been no public announcement really as such apart from the the demos of it um that you see that's seen today so it, it I'm, I, I'm pretty sure i'm pretty confident it'll come to windows insiders first but we don't know when and even then if it comes to the dev channel, we don't know when that would actually hit the, the general release. My personal guess, and this is a pure guess, not from any inside information, this will come, this will ship with the um, the, the new, the 22H2 update. That's my guess, that it'll be September, October release time for, for all users. That's a long way away. I mean, that's, that's almost six months away. In fact, it is six months away. Yeah. Uh, the, the reason why I'm saying that is because I think it will go into beta now. We'll have a couple months of beta, and then that will be the release. So that's when we get this new. We, I would, like I mentioned, we we're already getting the the new the, the new file explorer that was briefly shown that has all the the shortcuts in uh, and the 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 new home page. That will be 22H2 because we, we it says 22H2 when you go into the about screen. Yeah, true. True. So. Yeah, unless 22H2 is earlier, I would imagine. And I, I know that they can switch these things on and off, but I think this is a substantial enough feature that they'll um, uh, they'll uh, bring that over. So, so that's that's what we say. So I, I think um, is File it Explorer is it, is it substantial? I mean to say, you know, you, you you've had Windows 11 for a year. Hey, look, here's a slightly breathed over File Explorer. Is it that substantial? I I, I think. <laughs> what being cynical well gary would be able to answer that as in terms of um some of the technology he maybe knows the technology that they're using but i know that there's the, some of the the tools that everybody can use for windows like xaml islands and things like that that, that are publicly available so i think it's a bit of under the the hub work but yeah and we know they can switch these things on and off through um through a, a small update, or I don't even think they need to push it. They can just switch these things up, these features on and off. So it could be that they switch it on for everybody. But I, my personal guess would be this will be 22H2, and um, that's when we'll see the new File Explorer, along with the other things that they showed off um, at the event, which off the top of my head, I've forgotten what they are, because they're all in... Yes, yeah, there were same things in the folders in the start menu, that kind of thing. But I, I was wondering, yes, actually, in, as, a, as an IT administrator, are you looking forward to the ability to uh, surface helpful um, messages to your users, uh, you know, on, on above the taskbar or in the, or in the notification area to help them do their jobs. Actually, yes, I did see that. Um, yes, definitely am because um, pe- <laughs> people people often ignore my emails, um, and then when they've ignored them, after, and then they come back to me and say, "Well, you never told me, so I think I could." Uh, I could spam their 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 start menu screens, start their screens with my with my messages. So yeah, I think there is. The, I would I would be taking advantage of that. I think. Yes, and I guess also the the uh, auto patch stuff too. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, so uh, the, the look for, for IT admins, they look some good do some good features, especially if you're using Microsoft technologies to manage the the devices. Um, things like some of the Windows three six five stuff and the the if you go to sign into a page that's trying to steal your Microsoft credentials, there's an alert and, and that, how that where, what system is actually providing that. But that looked quite interesting, looked quite good as well. Mm-hmm. Cool. I mean, of course, um, uh, I mean, you know, I think Microsoft is, is, is very keen on enterprises adopting Windows 11. I mean, I, I don't know if you saw. What I got the, that um, impression. Like, <laughs> yeah. What the yeah, GG duplex stats were, were, were like, but Windows 11 adoption has gone pretty much flat recently. 
Yeah, and and pretty much um, that's pretty much because of uh, hardware. Mm. Um, although I, I, I've noticed recently new machines that I've been getting to work have, have come with Windows 10 and 11, and then you, when you just first power them up the first time, you can decide. But um, there is some user education to do around Windows 11. So I, if enterprises are on the side of caution, which they probably should do, mm. then yeah, they'll, be sh- they'll be going with Windows 10. And I got the feeling once Windows 10's on, on a device, even if it's, so it's capable of Windows 11, you're not going to go and wipe it or upgrade and put Windows 11 on it at any point in its life cycle. You're going to let it run its life cycle on Windows 10. Mm. So I think probably for enterprises there, they'll introduce it over the next X amount of, you know, maybe months, years. But once the Microsoft stop uh, shipping devices with Windows 10, that's when they, you'll see the adoption increase. So when you don't get the choice to, to backport it, or at least you don't, the default, currently the default is Windows 10. Would you like Windows 11? No. Okay, carry on. Maybe at some point they switch it around and make it up. So it's Windows 11, uh, and if you say you want Windows 10, where well, they make it so that it's a bit I mean, you need enterprise you agreement. Because, because I, mean, I mean, obviously, mainstream support for Windows 10 ends in 2025. So, at what point do you do, do you as a, an administrator reckon, reckon Microsoft will just stop giving users that option? Is it like next year, do you reckon, the year after? Yeah, like, you're going to want to have at least three years of support, aren't you? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I mean, I'm trying to think back to Windows. Something similar was maybe Windows 7. Yeah, you know, Windows 7 yeah, was often yeah, quite a long year, time. Yeah. Wasn't it? yeah. Um, there's less. If you play Microsoft, it's still going on now. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So there is a bit of of, of training. Um, maybe there's a few more features that need. The start menu is almost there now, I think, to feature comparity, uh, feature comparable with the previous versions. There's only a small. When I look at sort of the user base that I come in contact with, very few use the start menu, but those, you know, every, but most people pin it to the taskbar at the bottom or have a desktop shortcuts. You know, not yep. pe- people aren't really customizing the start menu um, to the degree that the change to Windows 11 would be a massive inconvenience. But we do have the odd people that you know, move the taskbar to the left or to the right or to the top, which you can't do at the moment, but it's, it's not a huge amount of people. So, yeah, I, I'm not sure when, when did Microsoft stops include or when did Dell or HP or whatever stop including Windows 10 images on those brand new devices or they make it so it's hard to go to go or harder to, to stick that's what the thing is at the moment it's very easy to stick with 10 at the moment but at some point they're gonna have to like you said yeah. they can't do it till 2024 well exactly yeah. of course the problem, the problem is you know administrators will go down the easiest path and at the moment the easiest path is definitely Windows 10 because mm. that's what all their tools are in everything works fine and they're very used to it but I I guess perhaps today's event was was Microsoft nudging people towards Windows 11 and said, "Hey, look, it's lovely over here, Windows 11. Come, come, join us in our Windows yeah. PC Live world." Yeah, I think so. I think that was it, and I think uh, enterprises are always very reluctant to to jump on something new, quite quite rightly, because you want stability and um, ease of use and everything else. And it's, it's I. I yeah, I don't like using Windows 10 anymore because it feels like an older, you know, it feels old now. But yeah, I certainly wouldn't uh, want to go and stick it on a few hundred machines and uh, you know, straight away you know, in one in one yeah. hit or something. It's 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 uh, it's got to be measured and controlled. And I think the way is through new mach- machines. So it, at some point you just we, we'll you know, stop bundling, stop putting 10 out and and just go with 11. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I mean, I, flip, I mean, I flip between ten and eleven on my production machines, and also um, uh, Mac OS on, on on another machine. And I think I'm currently running Ubuntu on a fourth machine. It's terrible. Do you want to know which is the worst OS by a long way? Controversially, go on. Mac OS. It's awful. It's really terrible. <laughs> I don't know why people love it so much. Uh, yeah, it's 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 pretty it's pretty difficult to use compared to um even compared to Ubuntu, which is fairly. Uh, has it has its own special uh, um, wrinkles in it, but, uh, but certainly it's a. Uh, uh, whereas 10, 11, uh, fine. I mean, Win- Windows 11 feels perhaps more like a Windows 10 with safety safety wheels on it. Perhaps I don't know. It just feels a bit, if it was a bit sort of softer and rounder and more cuddly, but also mm. I can't do all the things that I used to do as easily. Yeah, I mean, this. Yeah, there is that. There, it's, I think it's it, once you get used to Windows 11, you go back to Windows 10. It's a bit jarring, but. It was, 
Mm. I do I do use ten pretty, pretty much all day, and then when I'm not on sort of day job, then I use eleven all the time. So, uh, and then I've got my music recording machine, which um, is on still on ten because of those cog driver issues, and I do it does feel a bit. Yeah, uh, it does feel a bit old on on that machine, but then you know, it's not that bad that you know, I want to mess about updating it. Mm-hmm. So yeah, it, I think you're right. That event today was definitely seen as a um, okay. We launched it. We launched Windows 11 last year, and we let uh, consumers buy new machines with it. Now it's your turn, enterprises. I think that's what it was. It was aimed at. Exactly, yes, yeah, and I think as 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 we said, said earlier, you know, it's quite clear the Windows 11 growth has been dropping, or, or it would slow to a standstill. Really, I guess as all. All those who can upgrade have upgraded, have upgraded. Now we're down to users buying new machines. So yeah, yeah, it is time for enterprises to to make the jump as far as Microsoft is well concerned. Because um, um, yeah, it's it's unusual to see. I think yeah, a new version of Windows actually now be be overtaken by older versions of Windows. I suppose yeah. I mean, I guess we're in that from the Windows Seven days and, and Windows Eight, where Windows Eight never really got traction. Yeah. And and these changes that they're making to to Windows, I like that the, the folders in the start menu and all all those kind of uh, improvements are are good. And the, the, some of the audio Bluetooth types improvements. There's a lot of little subtle changes that uh, they're going to make this 22H2 update well worth it. But um, maybe that's when maybe that's when the enterprises will start to look a bit more. It's been around for a. a a year uh, the first patch has been released i mean that's what you used to say didn't you, you always mm. wait for, to, to the first service pack before you deploy a, oh, yeah, a microsoft I mean, operating system i mean there's no way you would as an as enterprise be, be going anywhere near windows 11 until it's been out for a year for sure yeah so, so th- this probably is 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 where that um that Push. starts yeah uh interesting i saw the um some stuff around the 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 cloud pc what do they call the um yeah, the, the the Windows Cloud PC where you can mm. sign into either of those, and they mentioned in the future they're going to have an offline, online, and I think offline mode. I thought offline mode was Windows, <laughs> which yeah. is just a PC. Um, but yeah, I can I can see perhaps that's where the future's going, where Windows future versions of Windows are more like that cloud PC version, and and yeah. there's some synchronization. Although, I mean, perhaps I'm very old, but I kept thinking Roman profiles, surely. <laughs> Roman profiles, yes. <laughs> Although, obviously, uh, a bit clever, but I'm guessing when it says, uh, yeah, I mean, again, again, one of the features was Windows 365, which is a cloud PC working offline. I'm guessing that's basically when Windows 11, because presumably you've got to have the OS running locally, everything, and then it just syncs mm-hmm. up with the profile um, once it's re- 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 reconnected. And also, I think uh, you can also do... Is it within Windows 365 boot? So you can choose to basically boot straight into that image, as opposed to. So it, again, if you're, I, I think the thing the, the thinking is 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 your is your users can can be running Windows wherever, be be it on their own devices or work devices or whatever, and they have the same experience. And also, more importantly, for for administrators, it's the same security posture as well. Mm. Yeah, uh, it 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 looked good, but it's not something I've uh, I've played with it. I have a office 365 dev account really expensive yeah <laughs> That's what we say about it. it i mean it's thing is it's cloud pc uh is actually and you know it's it's you know it's the concept's been around for many many years let's let, let's be honest you know citrix been doing it vmware have been doing it it's, it's it's not a new concept it's new for microsoft perhaps but it's not necessarily a, a new concept um and sort of renting your pc in the cloud i think is is very it's great for scalability because you can you, you can flex up and flex down but to render pc that's of a decent spec in the cloud you do end up spending a lot of money per month it does mount up surprisingly quickly yeah yeah you're right yeah um and it's and it's something that i'm not sure it's it's something it's not going to be something for consumers at the moment maybe in the future it would just just like chromebooks you i can imagine you can get a a low spec surface whatever what are they surface laptop Absolutely. I mean, uh, yeah, I, you know, I mean, uh, I mean it, it, if they add, if they add editing as a, as a tier to your, you know your Microsoft three six five home sub, where you get your six licenses or whatever five licenses for for, for Word, Excel, and what whatever, just like it now is one more premium, premium 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 tier. I can see a lot of home users going for that. So you just basically you fire up 
your productivity apps and you don't have to worry about what you're running. So it could be on a Chromebook or an iPad or a Mac or whatever. It, it just makes no difference at all. But at the mm. moment, the cost is is a lot. <laughs> it's, yeah. It's too much. Uh, certainly, com- interestingly, compared to how much, say, xCloud costs, where you're you know, running space on a, you're, you're renting space on, on, on Xbox is running some data somewhere. Mm. And that is relatively, it's still not cheap, but it's relatively inexpensive compared to a decent PC on cloud PC. But again, maybe that's going to change the pricing. You know, we'll, we'll perhaps get updated or maybe they'll, they'll just add it in as tiers because I think the auto patch, for example, we're getting very enterprising here. I believe that's an E3 enterprise option, isn't it? So, it's, so again, it will just be part of the, the subscription. Yeah, yeah, which is what the E3 is not particularly not that expensive. That's one of the the more the lower price ones, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. You know, yeah, many enterprises are going to be running that. Mm. So I do wonder if perhaps they'll look at doing something similar with cloud PC to make it even, and that could make it very attractive then. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So there's a, a lot of interesting stuff coming in the future but i think for, for now i think for a consumer side it's uh, 22 h2 is going to be the the focus <laughs> uh which is what's in the dev and beta channel at the moment we did get a and I, I saw it come up for you. I knew that you'd be excited. We did get a service pipeline test last week instead of a you, build. You probably saw the fireworks going off dead down south. <laughs> fireworks launching from Brighton there because there's another servicing pipeline test happening. <laughs> um, and that was 22581 is the current dev beta build. So we got 22581.200. So uh, testing the service pipeline, the best service pipeline in the game. It's the best tested thing that came out of Microsoft in a very yeah. real sense. Yes. Uh, now we did get something else uh, new last week. Uh, we got a re- another rebrand and uh, some new features, depending on which ring you are on. And that is your phone is uh, is no more. Yeah, they've axed it, uh, and it's been reborn as Phone Link. I guess if it's saying your phone, except not the iPhone. Um, <laughs> It was too much for a mouthful to say. So yes, this is a, this is uh, your phone has been rebranded as Phone Link, and and now it's just all, it is all about. I mean, they, they do mention iOS a bit, but really it's all about Android, isn't it? Yeah, it definitely is. Um, so yeah, the, the it's been renamed Phone Link from your phone, and the application that you installed, I think it was called Your Phone Companion, is now called uh, Phone Link. Uh, a PC phone link, I think it's called something like that on Android now. Um, That's right. And isn't there a QR code that's working sort of scan to set things up really fast? Yes, there was. Yeah, and that that was that was there on Samsung and and Android phones, uh, on Samsung and Surface for a while. It's called um, where's it gone? Oh, it's just it's actually on my on my Surface. It just has the PC name. I think it's called Link Phone Link now. Um, yeah, so that they they've renamed that, but also they they showed off the new uh, UI, which um, I captured. I did a video of that because it's actually available for Windows Insiders now. If you're on uh, release preview, you can see this uh, new look UI, which is like a, a tabbed UI. So I don't know whether you've you've seen this, but it's been a, been around for yeah a few months now. If you're on the Insider program, um, so not only is it is it got the rename? This has got the the new UI, and that and and that new UI is is what's coming to uh, is what's coming. So it's it's got the rounded corners as you, uh, for Windows 11 style, and it's got a tab thing with notifications uh, going down the left hand side and tabs across the top. So uh, it's an, a, a, a a bit of a, a more Windows 11 friendly look um that I, I quite like actually i do use the application a lot especially for replying to text messages uh, copy and pasting from from links and things like that so it makes sense i think to to name it it was a bit of a weird name in your phone my phone that kind of thing so yeah it makes it makes sense it's good to see them there in, investing and i think you can see that what microsoft are doing here is that they've met their they're really back getting into making sure that Windows 11 works well with Android phones, because I think they also announced some stuff with some other phone providers, didn't they, at the same time that that, uh, that could also be, uh, that also work with that, so not just Samsung and the Surface Duo. But no iPhone. But no iPhone, no. Um, 
it, they are really focusing on the Android side of it, which which I can understand because that's where they've got the the control of, and that's where they've got the um, the the room to sort of develop with it. In fact, did you see that um, there was a bit of reorg around the Android stuff at Microsoft? Uh, yes, yes, that they've they they've, they've shuffled the chairs again. Yeah, yeah, that's right. So they've moved Surface Duo OS. SwiftKey, PhoneLink, Microsoft Launcher uh, under a new Microsoft uh, or Android Microsoft Platform and Experiences team that reports into uh, the Android Platform Experiences group uh, into the I think eventually into Panos and, and that way. So I think it makes it makes sense to have these Android applications like um, Launcher. And the OS for the for the duo as well as well as phone link all in in one place to to make that sort of consistency of uh, experience. Um, it didn't re- it wouldn't make sense to have them spread out through the org. So it does make sense to have them all in one place, and it, it should mean that. Uh, well, first of all, I think it should mean that the Surface Duo gets a bit more gets a uh, gets to be the first of the integration platforms rather than second after Samsung. Um, it will all be although- Samsung first. Uh, but then I, I can understand. I can totally understand why Microsoft look at Samsung because that's a massive market. I mean, it's essentially yeah, to, it's to most to most users, isn't it? Android, Samsung are Android. I know there's the Google devices, but they're, they're I guess in a small percentage of the market compared yeah. to to Samsung. And so, 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 so go ahead. So it's huge. And I mean, do we have any word yet on the Duo three? No, I'm. St- Still sticking to my thing that it will they will skip a year and it'll be next year. What would be the Samsung Duo three? Uh, oh, it's Samsung Duo. It could could well be. Um, <laughs> it, they are working well with with Samsung on the integration. Uh, like it's all the, the the stuff in that in phone link with apps and everything else works for, worked first with Samsung before any other platform. So they, they, they do work well with them. But bringing the OS of the Surface Duo and SwiftKey, which is the, the touch, which is the key input on the on the Duo as well. Um, I don't think it's the default on Samsung though still. I think they use the, I can't remember they use their own or the Google, I think they use the Google one. But um, it does make sense to have them all under one team, especially Launcher as well. Um, so that Microsoft's um, Android development all in in one area, uh, which yeah, I think this is something that they can do. They can integrate Windows well with Android. So th- I think that's they've seen that they can do it. I think for um, iOS, it, it's a bit of a lost cause on that, isn't it? I think, as you mentioned, it's not they haven't got yeah, the controls exactly. over it. Yeah. And yeah, they can't um, do that integration like Apple would do between iOS and macOS. That's right. Yes, it's it's very much closed. The, the, the Apple system is very very closed. Yeah. So um, and of course you've got the uh, Windows subsystem for Android as well. Um, it's still relatively quite. got quiet on that one. Was it? Was it a few weeks ago they announced it was coming to release? Well, it hit release preview. I don't think it's actually available yet. Is it? Um, on no, full Windows. And it's also, uh, in, in theory, I think it's also only US only as well, isn't it? It is, yeah, yeah, it definitely well, is. Obviously, yeah. unless you do the various tweaks and things, and, and the same goes, and, and unless you're prepared to do some side loading, I think you're also fairly well stuck with um, what's in the store too. The yeah, store. yeah, you are. I know we talked about this a few times. That's that's one of those things. That, yes, it's a good that it works, and yeah, I use it every now and again, um, but. Even on my on my edit, on, I, I've got it on the Surface Go and the Surface Laptop too, and yeah, I use it occasionally, but it's not something I've actually installed on the Surface Laptop Studio yet because of the various. Go and get a beer. Hold on, and you get a beer now. You you mentioned the studio. Oh yes, <laughs> yes. The camera's looking good, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, it is. Um, it's not something that I really think, oh, I really wish. You know, if, if it was a real, uh, if it was a feature I really wanted, I know how to install it and jump through the hoops and get it up and running without having to install special builds or anything like that. And it, I just haven't bothered. I did it on the Surface laptop because, you know, I wanted the platform to test it on, but I haven't really felt the need for it, which is a shame because it's a great technology. It's just um, mm. I haven't 
got the use case really apart from if, like i mentioned before a couple of smart home apps that i do use uh which they do have browser versions but yeah i do i do like it but of course with with your phone or phone link i can use it through the through that way as well i can launch android apps directly on on from the well, start exactly. menu. i mean that's a slightly confusing thing i mean you kind of got the windows subsystems here so for android let, let you run android apps on the pc but then of course you got um, phone link which lets you run the apps on your phone on your pc screen so yeah it's all a bit confusing really um hmm. well, I, I think if i was using phone link i wouldn't necessarily bother using the windows the windows subsystems here it's a system for android because yeah. i'd have those apps on my phone yeah exactly it, it's a little bit it's more native feeling but yeah it, it's not enough to to warrant me uh pushing uh a div, you know the, the laptop studio onto another onto the inside of the ring so just yet so yeah. uh, maybe, maybe when 22 h2 gets to release preview maybe i'll, I'll do it then but it's more case of hey aren't our engineers clever yeah it does feel a bit like that and I, I'm, I'm glad they've done it but um, yeah, yeah. That's, it, 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 it's an engineering tool it's an engineering tool to force don't get me wrong mm. yeah but uh, i think the the, the future for Windows and Android is more around the integration between the device devices between your phone and your and your PC. That's that seems to be more the the future of it rather than running the Android apps on your on your PC natively. Uh, it seems to be tying them to get to tying your mobile device with your PC and having them work together well is the best because everyone's got a phone. It's not like you're not going to have a phone is it nowadays Every, everyone's got a phone maybe unless we all go back to using nokia 80, <laughs> 82 tens or, or something what, what was the one with the slide down keyboard that was like the, the one for the matrix time, that's fine <laughs> I, re I remember when i first got one with the the, the matrix one you know the with the slide yeah. down keyboard thing and it had a wap browser on it and like yeah. Amazing. I've been able to get the Formula One qualifying results when I'm out and about <laughs> <laughs> in text. Happy days. Yeah. And a more sim simpler and civilized time. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, yeah. So, anyway, so Microsoft, uh, we'll see what comes out of this reorg. It always takes a bit of time for everything to take effect. And sometimes it actually makes no difference at all. So, we'll, we'll have exactly. to wait and see. I saw some wag say the day's got a wine it, therefore it must be time for, for a real. Yeah, that's right. Usually it's the windows. Well, I suppose it depends on what's what's hot at the time. But a while ago, it was always windows, wasn't it? That was being was part of the reorg. And then windows was kind of like, oh, well, we lost that. Now we forgot about that now. And then since you know, last couple of years, windows is back in the in the mix again. Yeah. Uh, but. I'm looking forward to see what they uh, what they bring out from that. Um, now, what was the other the other thing I had to? T oh, have you got any other stories you wanted to talk about this week? No, that's it for me. It's a relatively quiet, I'm afraid. It does, yeah, because we've no we know build. So then, my my prediction is then. So we record this on Tuesday evening. Oh, there'll, um, there'll, there'll, there'll be a build yeah definitely a build there'll be a there. build and it will have tab browsing in there we go i'll be bold <laughs> uh and we'll get to test that um next week i did do um i did record a video of the new phone link application so um uh, and we can have a look at that um i have decided to have another go at doing a, a, a video of going from windows xp to windows 11 without mm -hmm. nu nuking the device and have another go at it doing it uh um, i've not i've just started i've just got windows uh, xp installed last time i got as far as windows 10 and then couldn't go from 10 to 11 uh because of gen 1 gen 2 so um and then i accidentally deleted all my checkpoints so i'm gonna have another go and not delete checkpoints this time i think that's that's the plan Oh, cool. oh, hey, I can tell you one thing I have done this week. Um, I'm currently in Toulouse today. Oh, yes, you said yes. And that's because uh, I went to um, Airbus to go and look at the uh, the Jupiter Icy Moons Explorer, which uh, is due for launch next year. Fantastic. So is, uh, is it a really big hangar that you've gone to? Yeah, well, basically, they, 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 they had it in their, what, what they call their quiet room. It's kind of like a room we, 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 where... Yeah, you maybe test a mobile phone antenna, but in this case, there's a whacking great spaceship in there. 
uh, although without yeah. this, although without its solar, solar arrays, because they are enormous. So this thing is going to go out to Jupiter and be solar powered. So it's, it has the world's Fantastic. biggest solar arrays. They're massive. Uh, but yeah, it's cool. So, so it's put, it was put in this room, and the, the purpose of this is they've got all the instruments on the spacecraft now, and they want to see what happens when they turn them on if there's any interference. So they kind of put, put so they put put put, put, put them in, in in his room, which when you see it up is, is the quietest room. There's nothing. There's no electromagnetics. Nothing at all. But they made us hand over watches and phones and everything when we're in there. So you can't take anything at all. You might upset the spacecraft. So um, uh, and that's the test that they were doing. But yeah, it's a it's a big old beast, that's for sure. And it, it launches uh, 2023. It's got, I think, like an eight-year cruise via various sort of um, slingshots around planets like Venus and Earth and things that, that, to, to get to Jupiter. Then it goes into orbit, and then it goes, I think it goes past uh, uh, Callisto, Europa, and eventually will end up in orbit around Ganymede. Fantastic. And, and that's will be what's that being launched on? And the very last Ariane 5. Oh, right, yeah. The very well, last that, one. That, that's still going it's still going yeah it's still going it's a well it's a hopefully i mean <laughs> they better be fine the Ariane six fairly soon because obviously amazon have um uh announced today that they've bought up a massive amount of, of, of rockets um to launch their project kuiper which is their version of starlink right and i think it's like 1883 launches they've bought but thus far they've got nine books on atlas fives but the atlas five is finished the rest are all flying um, on rockets that have never flown yet. So that's the Ariane 6, the Vulcan Centaur, and the Blue Origin uh, New Glenn. So none, none of those have flown yet. and uh, But they need to fly fairly soon because Amazon's con uh, license runs out for uh, for his satellites pretty quickly. He hasn't got much time left. Wow. So, um, so someone's, can, can you go onto Amazon and buy a rocket launch? Then? <laughs> <laughs> well, I suspect you'll be able to buy some broadband fairly soon. Uh, I think they, um, it, it sounds like, over 3,000 satellites there they had to launch, but they've got to get, get them up there. I think half of them have to be up by 2026, so they really are running out of time. So hence they, they've bought all these new things, and um, obviously the um, the one launch provider they've not used is SpaceX. Can't imagine why. Yeah, I wonder why that is. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's the one where we're using space uh, using space SpaceX because uh, obviously uh, the Russian Soyuz isn't available anymore. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah, yeah, um, yeah. That's that's true. And, and that, so we're going to have more interference from these uh, devices in the in the sky now. For astronomers, going to get um, oh, a, yeah, a I few can, blocks. I, I can do some more ranting about that if you like. It's fine. It's yeah. It's going to be yeah. Low low Earth orbit and over three thousand things up there. You think, oh my goodness sake, really, really? How many more things do you there? Uh, ESA had to dodge a bit of an old uh, Zenit rocket uh, on, I think, Saturday, on Friday, on Friday or Saturday, because um, it was, I think it was, it was like a less than one in 800 chance of it hitting, and it would have probably destroyed the satellite if it had had a collision. So they had to, they had to, had to move things quite quickly to dodge this bit of debris. And of course, that's going to be up there for hundreds of years in theory. Just, oh. yeah. <laughs> I'm going to add how many thousands more, and uh, no one's asked for them, but they're going to go up there. Yeah, we're just going to have this problem with space debris and space junk, aren't we? You know, as 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 we're trying to leave the planet for our ex, our missions to other other areas, we're going to be all dodging space junk all the time. Yes, yeah, so I must admit that um that Pixar film um is starting to wally. Yeah. It's starting yeah. to feel more and more like the future. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, well, it, it, I mean, it's, it's it's brilliant that you get to go over and 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 see this thing. So, I guess will you be able to have a write up this somewhere? Uh, yes, I'll, I'll probably be, be writing up um, on the on the reg in the next next few days or so. With, 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 in some pictures and some some interviews, it was a it was, it was a, a very interesting thing. And I would suggest following the the, the mission because while perhaps it's not as exciting as ones that have got a lander and stuff, it's still. Uh, uh, yeah, it's got a whole bunch of firsts uh, that it'll be doing, not not least of which is actually going into orbit around around one of Jupiter's moons, which is a that's a fairly major thing. I guess, and then so if they're sending data, collecting data, how what's the sort of the time it takes for data to go from from orbit of Jupiter well, back to, to Earth? Oh, you see, I'm I'm now having to answer off the top of my head. I think from Jupiter it's something like an hour and twenty, I think, but I'm right. sure you will call correct me on that. So uh, they have to have to record it. So it, it's it, it means the spacecraft have to be incredibly intelligent because they have to program them to do certain certain, certain things and, and and then send the 
data back and, and, and they use um basically mass storage ssd type you know, yeah, type, 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 type things uh, it's when you when you look at things like the um uh, the voyagers that use tape reels that's incredible and, and, and they yeah. use to record things on tape and then play the tape back and you think craggy that's a you know effectively just these tapes, these motors go going around in yeah. deep space millions of miles away just to, you know astonishing really and um i think i mean the european space agency it's I think it was the Solar Heliospheric Observer SOHO, which um, that launched in the 90s, and that was the point where they changed over from tape to um, solid state, and they they kind of dodged a bullet there because they um, they because the because the launch was the, the, the was delayed, they the, they basically swapped uh, one of the drives out for um, um for solid state drive, and then that's meant that. I mean, it's now crikey, what twenty five years on since since you know it, it shouldn't still be be working, but because it's got no moving parts because they can they can because they can control it, but they had to do it in a way that it pretended it was a tape a tape drive, just a, a very uh, very accurate perfect tape drive, and so uh, it's and so that they've been able to uh, keep it working even though it's uh, you know again way way past its expiration date. I, I'd I'd recommend always looking up any of these 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 old missions like Soho, Mars Express, and things just to see how. Engineers have kept these computers and spacecraft running way, way beyond the, the, the expiration mm. dates. Yeah, I mean, it's a bit like using a um, a USB adapter on your Spectrum tape drivers to keep to keep it <laughs> with a little bit more at stake. Well, exactly. I mean, I mean, here we are talking about oh, yeah, you know, Windows 10 goes out of it goes out of date in three years' time. It's like you know, I was talking to the uh, the, the 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 he said you 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 guys and I said yeah, it's a it's a career long project. You know, it was it was it first began being talked about in the early two thousands. They're going to launch it in twenty twenty three, and then it will probably still there'll probably be data still being processed by twenty fifty or later. So it's like it's a, you know yeah, you're nice. talking fifty years of, of 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 work on this. Yeah, yeah, it's amazing, isn't it? That the, kind um... of puts things into perspective somewhat. Yeah, long-term support is is another thing. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah. It's a, it's a real problem. I mean, it's, a, it's, it's, it's I'm, I'm nerding out now, but um, uh, I, I know some of the older missions that are, you know, they are have gone way beyond any expect you know, any expectations of how long they should they should last for. Uh, they're having to sort of almost dump to dive or scavenge a bit of eBay to find old computers to keep the ground systems working. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, that's, that's very true, isn't it? We, we joked about having how some enterprises have got old machines tucked under desks that they didn't realize they were doing but in, in this case you, you've got to maintain those compatibility yeah. and yeah you've got to maintain old uh devices exactly because it's not an option really just just port stuff to a you know a new system you think well it what's what's going to be easy is it, is it, would it be more efficient to try and find more old spare bits or invest all the money in the revalidation of, 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 of porting it to a new system so yeah, yeah. It's, uh, it's all very exciting stuff yeah yeah it's fun uh, yeah it is it's very it, it's, it's admiration for all those involved yeah just, yeah just just incredible yeah absolutely well i look forward to 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 reading your article on that and then uh, yeah i'm following along when that launch that launches there's, there's a lot so much happening in, in this, this area at the moment yeah it, it is I mean, it's, it's quite it's quite it's, i mean i think there's been um uh you know talking to some people t today there's been a very definite sort of push as a result of what's happened with the russian situation um in ukraine um, because suddenly all the things that people had grown to depend on just aren't there anymore. And, yeah, rocket wise, you know, yeah, Russia mm. built an all, an, a lot of the engines used by rockets around the world. So suddenly, you know, countries are having to rethink their pro their mm. pro their priorities and, and really accelerate programs. I mean, Ariane Six is a great example. It's like that. You know, somehow they've got to find a way of getting that not only on time but scaling it up. Because suddenly you haven't got the Soyuz rockets, the Proton rockets, which which had been there they they may not be available again for many years we just don't know mm. yeah absolutely yeah i think um this yeah this, this is a big topic but yeah this uh with with russia as meant that and not just that but also with covid in china and lockdowns mm. and everything else enterprises businesses of all, all uh, governments are all looking at some you know we had we had the mass globalization and in some respects it's got it's rolling back that isn't it a bit a bit more like with Brexit so, yeah. and everything, you know, a bit more cent decentralized or back to regional again. So these things come around in, in some respects, and I suppose something like the space program is just a massive. You, the lead times on things like that are, are are immense, aren't they? It is indeed, yeah. But also, you know, obviously, they say it's a massive subject. I just want to emphasize that it is just a space program. It's it's obviously, you know, it's 
nowhere near as serious as what's happening to you know the individuals involved in these in these situations yeah. so it's, it's, yeah. it's just rockets a bit like you know you know the, the the international space station may well come to an end well oh dear that's a shame but and i'm a massive space fan but compared to what's happening on the ground it's not the, it's not the end of the world yeah but it perhaps shows you know that we, we as a as a global uh, planet as, as a global people we need to look outwards not just inwards all the time because yes. this yeah, yeah, like we, we more. yeah exactly yeah, yeah uh, and and you do look at the astronauts the cosmonauts working the space station quite happily together you think well that they seem to get on the right but they're professional intelligent people so i'm sure they, mm. they i'm sure they do yeah um, yeah exactly. yeah <laughs> unlike some of the lunatics on the ground who run the show it seems but there we go that's a, that's a day. <laughs> yeah that's it yeah and there's probably other podcasts that t- cover this um yeah, to a great extent as well but yeah it does it it's uh, all as it's all everything's interlinked um as to mentioned <laughs> on the it crowd episode where the, the rainforest and things like that don't open the red door um <laughs> so well excellent well we'll look forward to reading about your article so where can we find you and your articles well you can normally find me on twitter at richard underscore speed uh you might get an edit button as well soon <laughs> well yes yeah i guess if uh uh, I, I, again, we're, we're straying into all the politics <laughs> here, but with, with Elon Musk buying a big chunk of Twitter, mm, I must admit it's a bit worrying, isn't it? Because yeah. he has used that platform to do some things that maybe are a bit dubious. But, mm. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's something else for another really show as well. Oh, yeah. Excellent. <laughs> you well, started hopefully- it. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Well, we'll be we'll be back with uh, more down to earth topics like file explorer tabs. That's more my thing. Exactly. So exactly. We'll, hopefully, yeah. we'll be talking about that next week, and I'll be proved right uh, uh, that. Uh, uh, and I said I told you so. It would be coming this week, but you never know. I'll probably be proven totally wrong by this time next week. You know, laugh at me. Well, okay, that's, so we'll uh, we'll see you next week. Cheerio.